Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Whether this is your first time viewing one of my videos or if this is your 82nd time viewing one of my videos, I am glad that you are here and I'm glad to be talking with you today. It has been a long time since I've talked to any of you guys. It's been roughly one month now. Things over in the real world have been very busy, but I have some free time today. So here we are back in Microsoft Flight Simulator. 2020 and we are here with a super awesome airplane that just came out earlier this week with the new 40th anniversary edition it is the Hughes H4 Hercules otherwise known as the Spruce Goose or if you're like me I like to call it the Spruthus Gooses it is an airplane maybe it's a vessel maybe it's an aero vessel I don't know what you want to call it but it does fly and it does float and to prove that it floats we are here on the water in the port of Nelson which is just north of the airport Nelson on the South Island of New Zealand and for today's flight we're gonna taxi out to where we can actually take off we're gonna fly kind of around the coast primarily northeast to Wellington where we're gonna land in the harbor in Wellington and go over to the port with that let's go ahead hop in the spruce of Gooseth and get on our way all right so here we are in the cockpit of the spruce goose I did get us tugged away from our dock we were parked right over there between these two ships now we are tugged out here for engine start we do have the APU running so if we be quiet for a minute. That kind of lawnmower, I guess really not a lawnmower, maybe more like a tractor-ish noise in the background. That is our APU. It is up and running. And since we got that running, we'll go ahead and click on our position lights. And that's all we'll turn on for right now. We are going to, that's the wrong button, we are going to slide into the back here. Back into, I guess, the flight engineer seat. And we're going to get this bad boy fired up. So, sitting back here at the flight engineer's panel. To get this fired up from where we are right now, we need to go ahead and we need to prime the engines that we want to start. So, come down here to primer. We're going to fire up number one first. So, one 1,000, two 1,000. 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. That is good. We want to turn the magnetos on. Which, if I remember, are those guys. And then we want to fire up. Let's come watch our gauges. Looks like we got a good start. So now we're going to do the opposite too, so we don't start drifting too far. So, 1,000, 1. 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. There we go. Turn on the mags. And fire up the engines. Now I want to look over here. RPM's alive. There goes our manifold. Alright, so let's do middle two now. 1,000. That's the wrong button. We didn't prime it. And we didn't turn on the magnetos. My bad. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Now middle two goes on. And let's try that again. They should fire up this time. And there we go. Got a good start. And now our last two engines. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. 1005. Come over here. Flip those up. And start it. Now let's watch these RPMs coming up. There went our manifold pressure. And it sounds like we got two engines running. That's good. That's what we want. So now we want to get the RPM up. RPM is actually about exactly where we want it. So now we want to go ahead and open up the cow flaps. Which, where's our cow flaps? So let 
let's see, where's the indicator? There it is. So it's this gauge up here. Let's hold this down for, say, ah, last throttle work. Okay, so, well, I know it's right here. There, there we go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Where'd that get us? Not even close. Okay, so. Oh, they're in the, oh, okay. Sweet, I don't gotta hold them down the whole time. And now, I don't know why it's not showing that they're opening. Oh, that's because they're right here. I'm looking in the wrong spot. Duh. Um, now we can go ahead and turn our APU off. It's going to be these guys. Well, where's the APU master? So, there you go. APU is powered down. We can turn that off. And we'll get... Okay, can't turn those on. Then we'll hop back up, up front where we belong. It looks like we did pick up a little bit of forward momentum, which is okay. So now we just want to go ahead and turn our pedo heat on. And we already got our navigation lights on. So pedo heat, and we'll go ahead and turn those ski landing lights on too. Laps we want into the second position for takeoff. Which let me just move that back and over. Up and down, there we go. And now we are good to go. So for takeoff. All we're gonna do is pull the stick all the way back. Just hold it back and at about 80 knots, we should come up off the ground. So with that, let's get zoomed back a little bit and let's give her throttle. So there's the top of the green arc. That's where I'm gonna put it for takeoff thrust. We got the yoke pulled all the way back. And there we go, we're hopping. A little bit of rudder to kind of keep us moving straight and boom we're off the ground i think we rotated at about 70 knots but we only got about 10,000 pounds of fuel on so we're not extremely heavy i'm going to want to just maintain a climb of about 90 i don't know how accurate that is but that's how accurate i'm going to make it so let's pitch back some more get some trim in so i don't got to do all the work that was too much trim that should get us about where we want to be. We just retracted one notch of flaps. There's 90, so we're going to want to push it over a little bit. And bring it back up. And we'll go ahead and bring up that other notch of flaps, too. So now, um, I don't know how high we're going to climb up today. We don't need to go terribly high. If we were to just fly in a straight line, I believe 4,500 would keep us clear of any obstacles, but... We're just going to fly over here along the coast. We're not even going to bother flying over land. So we, we really don't even need to take it super high. I don't know how high I want to take it. Let's see, let's make this disappear real quick. Let's see, so we just went through, we're going through 1700 not going to be the right altitude technically, but let's just go ahead and make it 2,500. It'll be our cruising altitude today. We'll fly at the wrong altitude. Why not? That's how we like to roll on this channel. We make up our own rolls. And so as we're climbing here, yeah, we'll go ahead and bring it back down to 45. And then for cruise, I couldn't find any kind of information. I mean, the plane only flew once. So I could not find a lot of information in terms of performance or whatnot. So we're going to make our own performance charts. And for cruise, um, oh, I just blew past 2,500 because I wasn't paying attention. Okay, let's go ahead and pitch down. Wasn't paying attention and I blew through our altitude. Imagine that. So we're going to bring the props back to, let's call it 30. Well, that's the manifold pressure. We're going to bring the manifold pressure back to 30 and we're going to bring the props back to 2,000. Hold it back a little bit too much there. 
Looks like we might just actually cruise at three now. Which would be a little bit more accurate, minus the factor of VFR. But, oh well. We didn't really plan this flight out too much. So, here we are in cruise. Uh, there is no autopilot, as you can probably imagine. And also, I don't know if it's just me or if it's Microsoft being Microsoft. But I cannot figure out how to get the ATC or the nav radios to work. So it's supposed to be, like, you know, in the day, this airplane was supposed to be able to fly across the ocean, whatever. I, I cannot get it to do that because I can't even figure out how to tune a VOR or an ADF on this. We're even using the, um, the radio navigation from the Wing 42, Boeing 247. I can't even get the radios to work, so we will not be doing that. That's why it's pretty much going to be just a VFR-only aircraft. And we're just going to fly the coastline here and work our way over to Wellington. And we'll try and get some outside shots once we get out of this kind of mountain-related turbulence. And we'll probably try and stay a little bit more off the coast here once we finally get in the green. And I'll try and get us some nice outside shots of the airplane flying around. And I'll see you guys a little closer to Wellington. Hey everyone, um, I'm going to interrupt the flow of the video with this brief interruption to do a real quick kind of overview in my two cents on the airplane itself. Uh, so once again, this is a free airplane, came out with the 40th anniversary edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator. If your game is like mine, you have to update it, so you will get it. Just whether or not you fly it, that's up to you. Uh, we are currently in the cockpit. Um, I don't know why I needed to explain that, but we are. And I've never, like, seen the inside of a blimp. Um, so this is, this statement is from a very ignorant perspective. I've, I don't know what the inside of a blimp looks like. But if you ask me to picture what the inside of, say, the Goodyear blimp looked like, I would probably say it looks pretty close to this. You know, you got some seats in the back. Probably a table. I don't know. You you might not have a flight engineer. I re once again don't know. But like with the panels split, like co-pilot panel, engine panel, pilot panel, giant center console, and these windows, the window layout. This is what I would think the inside of the Goodyear blimp looks like. So kind of neat. Once again, I have no clue what a blimp looks like, especially on the inside. On the outside, I could tell you what a blimp looks like. Giant balloon, little tiny cab that hangs off the bottom. But inside, I I know nothing. Once again, ignorant perspective. So, if you do know what the inside of a blimp looks like, let me know how far off I am. Am I just crazy, or am I on to something? But otherwise, um, for the quick review, uh, flight dynamics. Airplane flies awesome. I don't think there's anyone really left alive that's actually flown the Spruce Goose. I'm pretty sure everyone that was there the one time it flew is no longer with us. But I imagine it flies how the real one would fly. It feels heavy. Um, we're coming in at 282,953 pounds. so. So it feels heavy, which is good. It doesn't feel like a fighter jet. It doesn't feel like the PC-21. It doesn't feel like the Kodiak. 
it feels like it actually takes some muscle to move this thing around. Which is great. I love that. Uh, flying over the hills or mountains, whatever you want to call them out on this side of the aircraft. That's the top end of the North Island. Correction. The top end of the South Island. South Island. Bottom end of the North Island. Wellington is somewhere over there. But as we're going over the top of those hills, mountains, whatever you want to call them, in Montana, if you told someone, that's a mountain, they'd be like, oh no, that's a hill. That ain't a mountain, that's a hill. So, depending on where you are, hill, mountain, you do you, man. I'm, I'm probably just going to call it a mountain, because to me, you know, giant chunk of land above sea level, it sticks up out the ground, it's pointy, you can easily smack into it. It's, it's a mountain. So anyway... Flying over those mountains, the airplane, I think, gets bounced around a bit too much. I feel like a real airplane that weighs 282,000 pounds wouldn't really get pushed around by the turbulence associated with the mountains. But I'm not a real pilot. I'm a student pilot. I just got my part 107 work like two weeks ago. Just got that. And an aircraft dispatcher. So... I, I've never flown an airplane that close to the mountains, and I most certainly haven't flown a 282,000-pound airplane at all. I don't even know if I've ever been in an airplane that even weighs that much. Maybe I have. I've been to some air shows, got to like go in some big airplanes. I, I don't know. Maybe I have. But anyway, I don't like commercially. Biggest thing, you know, I've flown on an A330. That that can probably pass the 282,000-pound mark. But I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting distracted here. I, I don't know how authentic it is how much this airplane gets moved around over those mountains. So, if you've flown a big airplane or even a small airplane around the mountains, um, if you could see in the first half of the video how much the plane was moving, or if you could hop in the airplane, turn on live weather. I'm on live weather lifetime right now here over New Zealand. Just go fly over the mountains at like maybe thousand feet above them. I'm flying at 30, roughly three grand above sea level. And see see what you think if it just gets thrown around too easily. I, I kind of think it does, but now we're getting really nitpicky on the flight dynamics of the airplane. Other things, we got this clipboard. That just shows you how many gallons all the fuel tanks can hold. I wish it would like update live. This is neat. We can move this slider. So that's for the my side of the airplane. But so right here, there's those two curtains, and we can see that engine right there, just barely. Well, if we slide this over to down, look at that. The curtains come down. Pretty cool. Then you got your, um, like, quick start options. Uh, this airplane's really easy to kind of just start up by yourself. I followed the default um, flight sim checklist from up here, that little guy. Um, I just followed that to get this thing started up. It, it, it's really simple. It, it's definitely not a study level airplane. It, it, it's really easy. Really easy to fly. Really easy to start up. You do it like two or three times. I'm sure you got it down. Um, only real criticizing I can do to the airplane is none of the radios work. Like... ATC radio don't work if you want to use it you got to come up here uh, going back here to what I assume is the navigator spot this might be the comms guy I'm not sure uh, probably comms he's got a little telegraph thing probably your comms dude navigator probably sits back here somewhere there's the curtains on my side of the airplane but you can't operate like the directional radios nothing which is kind of a disappointment because when I first saw this airplane, I really wanted to make a long series, and it was going to be a long series, where we fly it from Long Beach all the way down to New Zealand. I think that would have been an awesome little mini-series on the channel. It would have taken a lot of time for me in real life, but I thought it would have been super awesome to do for you guys. But I, there's no way I'm going to be able to fly in a straight line just over across a blue hand flying it, because guess what? No autopilot. You got to trim this bad boy. So, 
only real complaints. Otherwise, I really like this airplane. This, other than the DC-3 and the Beaver, this is what I was looking forward to the most about the new update, was the Spruce Goose. And I'm glad we got it. So with that, um, we're working our way into Wellington. Um, we're coming right by all the windmills. So I'm going to let you go, and I'll see you guys when we get closer to landing. Alrighty, so we're back in the Sprucey Goosey, and right there off of our left side, right there, that is the runway at the Wellington Airport, and we're working our way down to about 1,500 feet. We're just pretty much going to fly right over the airport, that way we know we stay clear of any traffic. And then where we're going, we're just about to lose it by this pillar, but over there is the port or at least from little nav map looks like the port over here in Wellington and so what we're gonna do because I haven't ventured out this way I usually only come to the airport and then fly away um, we're actually gonna go venture down there do a flyby check it out and then we'll set up and configure ourselves to land that way we know where we're gonna land where we're gonna taxi into before we even give it a try so coming in, we won't fly it perfectly over the runway. It's because I don't think we're gonna get lined up well enough. Sure, my turn just a hair too early. Looks like someone's actually lined up on the runway. Can't tell. Yep, someone is. That looks like the um, default Orbix. Actually, this isn't Orbix, but the airplane that comes with the scenery that I can never seem to get rid of. So they're lining up on the runway to take off now yep so right over there about to lose on the hillside but little nav map made it look like that is a port whether that's a shipping port or a rail port I'm not entirely sure but it looks like a port so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come straight over the runway well straight over the airport this way and then kind of hook around view our landing and parking opportunities and we'll come kind of a loop and I'm thinking we'll land facing town this way that way it's a shorter taxi in then we'll we won't taxi into the dock but we'll taxi into the port we'll shut her down and we'll have to wait for a tugboat to come pick us up and bring us in so that is the game plan we're at 2,000 feet so we've come down a thousand foot we got a nice view of that plane taking off that's for sure we got a very nice view Looks big. So let's actually start descending a little bit more. I'm going to bring manifold pressure to the bottom of the blue arc. And we're going to bring back full prop. And we'll probably increase some speed, which is fine. I don't have any problems with that. Because right now we're just going to fly over town. We're not actually landing. Well, I mean... We, we could always try and pull up right here, but it looks very... That looks like quite a lot of wave activity. Yeah, we're definitely going to need to get a tugboat to go on the, go on the port. Okay, yep. That looks like there should be a vessel there, but the game doesn't show it. So that's already looking good for us. We're coming up on 1,500 feet. That's where I wanted to be for our flyover. And yeah, so if you're from the area, I know there was a guy uh, that commented on a, one or two of my other videos that he's from New Zealand. If you're familiar with Wellington, I don't know if you are, but if you are, what's that big green thing right there? Is that is that like is that? Let's see, what is the game they play down there? Sports is not. Is it is that a cricket stadium? I'm not a sports guy, so I apologize if that's the wrong sport. Was that like a, but so that big patch of green grass, is that for cricket? Um, what do you know about this area of Wellington, if you know anything at all? Now I'm purely assuming, because you live there, you know something about it. 
apologize if that's incorrect. But let's see, it looks like we got some kind of train station maybe? Cause, yeah, that, that's a train station with some platforms. Bunch of rail, so that must be passenger rail. And that looks like that would be cargo right there. And yeah, so we, we got some good opportunities. So I think we're still going to land towards Wellington. And then we'll have a, a tug bring us in a lot closer to downtown itself. So now we'll go ahead and get turned. We got props all the way up. Mixture is good. We're going to bring throttle back so that we can start slowing up. And we're almost at 1,000 foot. Let's see. How do we want to do this? I think we'll fly the coastline just a little bit longer. That way we got plenty of space for landing. There's 100. 100 where I kind of want to be 100 and 1,000. So I'm trying to figure out what way the wind's actually blowing. I'm not sure. We're still going to land towards town. Hopefully we don't crash into town. That'd be embarrassing. So we're going to bank right and as we work our way towards town again. Let's see, we're getting a little fast and a little high. So let's back off throttle, drop the nose. Nice slow turn. Once again, airplane feels heavy. I I really enjoy it. It act, it feels how I am, would think this airplane would actually feel in real life. So there's the airport. I feel like we really want to sharpen up that turn now. Let's really bring throttle back at a hundred. I feel like we should be able to give it ten flaps. There's 90, bring it to takeoff flaps. There's town, so let's flatten, flatten out the nose. Well, not the nose, flatten out the wings. And oh, we're landing right into the sun too. I didn't, I did not think of that. There's 80. Just go ahead, bring full flaps in and try and maintain 80 for our approach. And looking at the water. I really couldn't tell you. I think the wind might be... I think we have a crosswind from the right looking at the waves. I'm not entirely sure. So here we are. I gotta remember this thing is like massive. Like the Kodiak where the water is right underneath us. I'm sure the water is probably feels like forever below us. Alright, so there's a hundred. So it's kind of work I'm bringing... Give it a little bit of power, bring the nose up. And we got a weird wind change there, so let's give it some rudder. Keep that nose up, give it more power because the nose is dropping. And too much power, I'm off. And we're down. Just keep full back pressure. Let the airplane bring itself to a stop. And here we are. So now the winds it must be pretty windy because that wind's already really pushing us. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and shut her down and get tugged into port. I will get a hold of you guys once that's done. All right, everyone. So it took a while. As you can see, the sun's already going down, but we were finally able to get tugged into the port here in Wellington. Uh, they managed to find a spot where we just ever so slightly fit. But we're parked right next to downtown. We are docked and on dry land now. I'm not sure when we'll see this airplane again, but let me know if you want to see it again soon. Maybe you want to see the DC-3 or the beaver, or the Kodiak. Um, we all know I have a sweet spot in my heart for the Kodiak. Uh, let me know what you want to see next. Uh, it was really good to have you guys here today. 
I'm so glad you clicked on this video and watched for however long you decided to watch for. I'm just really glad to have had you here at all. And if you like this video or if you didn't like this video, go ahead and say something down in the comments below so that way I can improve and make things better for you in the future. Um, if you did like the video, it'd be very nice if you could like it. Or maybe even subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, no matter what, I still just want to say thank you so much for being here, and I appreciate all of you. I hope you guys have a great weekend.